Uh, the laser came along. I had the idea of the laser. I was sure it was going to be important and interesting for communication, for example. And it could make very intense light and burn things and so on. I recognized that. Now it could, it could maybe manufacture by cutting things and so on. So I recognized some things, but I could by no means recognize all the wonderful things it's doing. Over the past 50 years, few technologies have shown as brightly as the laser. Early speculation in the press touted the laser as a possible death ray, like something out of a Buck Rogers sci-fi flick. That reality is still a way off, but carbon dioxide lasers blast a very real power, cutting thick sheet metal at Drowco Metal Fabrication in Weatherford, Texas. That's a Robbie, a very famous scientist, Nobel Prize. Also, Professor Cush, who got a Nobel Prize too, excellent scientist. They came into my office and said, uh, look, Charlie, that's not going to work. You know it's not going to work, and we know it's not going to work. You've got to stop. You're wasting the department's money. You've got to stop. Well, fortunately, in the universities, professors have independence. Striking distant objects with a laser beam goes back decades to when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin first stepped on the moon in 1969. The astronauts placed a device called a laser ranging retro reflector on the moon's surface. So, what is a laser? The word laser is an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. This was no invention that grew out of engineering or a high-tech company. Its origin can be traced largely to the theoretical physics of Albert Einstein. A paper he wrote in 1917 set out the theory of stimulated emission of radiation. Research is underway at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory to complete a national ignition facility. It will cost more than three billion dollars and be completed in 2008. If it succeeds, fusion could provide a source of tremendous energy for electric generating plants by about the middle of the 21st century. And unlike today's fission reactors, fusion would not produce significant radioactive waste. Whatever the future of lasers may be, those benefits will all stem from what started out as just science research. That's part of the problem with basic science. Nobody can predict what it's going to do. We know exploration is going to tell us some new things. And some of it will be very useful, but we don't know what. And so this is very typical, very, very good example, a uh, very typical example of exploration. But you don't know just where it's going, what it'll discover. But every once in a while, it discovers something tremendously important, and so it pays off. <laughs>